Hi, my name is Koye Gui from Team NYRCS CS4, and that that's me. That's me right there. Uh, I'm from Singapore, and I don't have any previous robotics or robot cup experience except for this one, uh, Co Space Rescue, uh, preliminary round, and now I'm on to the finals. So, the problem. We're given a map. The map has obstacles. It has stuff to pick up, and it has a deposit zone. It also has stuff that slows the robot down. So how do we pick up the most number of objects in 6 minutes while still avoiding these obstacles? Well, the solution, pathfinding. We create a graph representation of the map and add nodes to where objects will spawn. For example, node 0 is located at position 120, 220, and node 1 is located at position 264, 230. So our robot AI is basically just to move around the current node and collect stuff Go to the closest node after a few seconds and when six objects have been picked up just move to the deposit zone and deposit all the objects that it has and just repeat this for the rest of the six minutes and obviously this is what it results in uh this is the second highest score that i got the highest score is 1345 uh, on the preliminary round but i didn't take a picture of that because i forgot to it consistently racks up over a thousand points so the conclusion it's pretty good, you know, it's pretty poggers, right? It collects over a thousand points consistently and it does not kill itself 99.99% of the time unless it does, which in that case, uh, I, that is unfortunate. But you know, it works. So the challenge, right? The task analysis, the challenge. What is the challenge mission? It has a bunch of mini tasks, right? How do we code this? How do we code the AI? Why does my code not work? And when, you know, when you fix it, just, you know, why does it even work, you know? And you know, when we solve all of this, our mission is successful. So the AI, it's just a bunch of code, you know, AI more like nested if statements. That is literally what there is right here. It's a bunch of if statements. I'll break it down for you. So duration and info. What this code does is every tick, it gets info on whether it reached the destination yet, uh, the angle between the current position and the destination, as well as what color it's sensing right now. Uh, and the duration code right there just stops the robot to pick up the object or to deposit objects when it's on the orange zone. As you can see from the previous one, it uses a get color method, which basically just uses the left and right color sensors to detect what color it is. There are actually random rectangles that spawn on the map uh, that cause the position info to be lost and the X and Y coordinates of the robot become zero. And the robot just ends up spasming out. So to counteract this, I set the current X and Y coordinates to the previous X and Y coordinates before it entered the rectangle. So that way it's a close enough approximation for the robot to continue moving where it is uh, and it works. So nodes and movement, what this does, it stores the list of nodes already visited in an array so it doesn't keep on visiting them. You don't want your robot to just keep on visiting node 0 and node 2. It also removes the earliest node visited in an array when it, it's visited more than a certain amount of nodes so that it can go back to that node because uh, objects do spawn over the course of the game. When it's full of 6 objects, go to the deposit zone. That's all that second if statement is doing. And if it's spent a certain amount of time at the node already, which I set at 120 ticks, then it just goes to the next closest node and Roombas over there. So, this is very big brain, right? What this is doing is when it's on an object, pick up the object. When it's on the deposit zone, deposit. It's very big brain. When it wants to move to the destination mode, it moved to the destination node. When it's reached the destination node, it moves around it. When it wants to orientate itself to the destination, it rotates itself to face the destination. It's very big brain, I know. When it reached the node, it stops moving to the node and adds the node to the visited list. And while it's moving to the node, it constantly checks if it's heading in the right direction. So algorithms, making the graph. This is the implementation of it. So all we have is a make graph function and we have a list of nodes and the adjacency list. And we just pass those two as the arguments for the make graph function and it returns our graph of the map. So how it works, it goes through the list of nodes and the adjacency list. And for each node, it gets the Pythagorean distance to every connected node uh, using the adjacency list passed in. 
If it's not connected to a node, the distance is zero. So for example, consider a graph such as that one over there. Uh, 0, 2, 2, 0. That means node 0 is connected to node 0 with a weight of 0, meaning it's not connected to itself, and it's connected to node 1 with a weight of 2, and vice versa. It generates that before however many nodes you want, or that you have in the graph. So Dijkstra. Dijkstra is, uh, is crucial for our AI, right? It goes through each node in the graph that has not been visited yet, and has the shortest total weight from the source node, and it repeats itself until the destination is reached. This generates an array of parent nodes, which is converted into the shortest path using a recursive set path function. So this is the implementation of Dijkstra. Uh, as you saw earlier, when it's full, it goes to the closest orange node, and when it reached the time up at the current node, it just goes to the next node, and it pathfinds itself there using Dijkstra. So debugging. What could go wrong? Uh, lots of things. For example, CoSpace just crashes uh, because of an error in the code, right? Uh, and this is very annoying. The reason for that is because initially I initialized dest node to be undefined and it returned undefined uh, when I couldn't find the closest node. So what this did, it tried to path find itself to node undefined and that crashed the program and it gave me a lot of pain for many hours. But in conclusion, uh, the result is mainly dependent on the placement of nodes. So placing it awkwardly would make the robot mess up and it kind of just gets stuck there. But it's able to rack up over 1,000 points consistently, uh, and this is the only method that I use. If I was asked to solve the same challenge again, I would improve the strategy by making the robot move such that it collects all the objects inside the node, because right now it moves like a Roomba, very stupid, and it bumps into things. It does not pick up all the objects. I would also devise a way to reach the super object and collect it, as well as to spawn the super object more frequently and this will give me even more points, but it's quite difficult. So what I've learned is, I learned C++ Dijkstra's algorithm, and also the importance of not being lazy and good time management. It was very stressful because the teacher in charge always sent information very last minute. He sent the preliminary round map at 1 o'clock p.m. on the day itself. So I only had 11 hours left to complete it, which was very rushed. Uh, but it was fun because, you know, it was coding and I liked to code. And stuff I would share with other people is just that, you know, have fun with the competition and coding. Thank you. Goodbye.